Hello there. It's gonna be a quick, uh, hopefully, tutorial video on the, uh, you know, the brakes on the Be Cool. Uh, I had the Adventure, well, have the Adventure, I had an Explorer. Uh, they're both mechanically similar. So my issue, my brakes stopped working. I'm riding down the street, uh, first time out that, that day, and when I depressed the lever, nothing. It's like you could barely feel them slowing the bike down. Uh, super spongy lever, spongy brakes. What's going on here? Well, you know, I, I, I'm a little into, uh, I, you can see in the background, motorcycles. So I know like you're using hydraulic brakes, air is your enemy. So there's gotta be air in there somewhere. So I ordered up a little kit to bleed the brakes on this Be Cool. And I'm gonna give it a shot. And we'll see what happens. Hopefully that tightens it up and all right, like I said, I've been riding along and having a good old time and I go to grab the brake and that's full brake. I'm pedaling. I don't have a battery in rate at this moment. So that's really not a good thing to happen, especially with the front brake. And then alternatively, this is the uh, rear brake here. Now I have nothing. Here I am pedaling this big heavy bike with just my legs only with the brake fully depressed and I'm not stopping. It is giving a little bit of resistance, but something is obviously wrong. So here we go with the front controls. We got our uh, rear brake and our front brake. The two master cylinders that hold the mineral oil. It goes down the lines down to the calipers. You're gonna have to rotate these up so that they're level. Uh, or this is where you're gonna be bleeding it from, so you're gonna want this at its highest point so that the air can uh, escape. This is a five millimeter Allen. Uh, it may be in your Be Cool kit. I haven't really checked because I like these old T-handle things here. But just a quick loosen, and you should be able to move it up. Next off, for whatever reason, Be Cool has this love of Torx bits. So, it's definitely not in your toolkit. This here is a T10 Torx bit. And you're gonna need that to go in here to remove the screw to get to the bleeder. Hopefully this is making sense. I have the bleeder screw as high as it'll go. Okay, so if there's any air trapped in this thing, it should be going up to the top. So let's uh, T10 this thing out. We'll see what we have. There's a little itty bitty O-ring in there. It's you can see it's just hanging on, ready to fall off and roll into some crack or crevice, never to be seen again. So do whatever you can to not lose that. What are we looking at? Uh, get my hands out of the way. This is your bleeder here. I'm gonna try and put a little more mineral oil in here, fill it up, tickle it some more and then uh, reseal it, see what happens, see if that firms it up at all. If not, well, don't worry, there's more parts to this kit that I haven't learned how to use yet that go down to another bleeder screw down here where you're supposed to be able to kind of almost like a traditional like motorcycle or car and uh, pump the fluid out. I think I forgot to mention the uh, bleeder kit itself. I ordered this through my favorite Amazon. Uh, I think it was like 20 bucks. All right, starting off with the uh, the little cup I mentioned. Like I said, it's got these threads to it. The threads here. Oh, look, and it actually worked. So that thread's right down in there. Don't want to make it too tight because it's really fine. And then we're going to go back to our mineral oil. And we're going to put a little bit of mineral oil in there. Let's see, just get it up to the neck. Because you don't want to use it all up. Set that down. So let me try pushing this and see if we get, oh, look at that, air. The air is the enemy. So let's see if we can't just keep pumping until we get air out. As it's pushing air out, it's slowly drawing this in. You can see it going down. You don't want to draw air into it, so try not to run this dry. But again, don't use all of it because I don't know how much this is gonna take and they only sent me a little bottle. 
Oh my, look at that. Bubble, bubble, bubbles. So, air compresses. That's why if there's air in the lines and you're pushing this lever, it's just compressing. You're not getting any uh, brake action. The mineral fluid does not compress. So that's why you, when you're pushing this, it's causing the fluid to push the fluid down, to pushes the piston in your, down here in your caliper, and makes your caliper pinch. Uh, so let's see. Actually, I can actually feel this thing firming up now. There's a little bit of air going in there. There's quite a bit of air. This has not been done since I bought the bike. I've got about 80, 90 miles on the bike. So I'm assuming they didn't fill it all the way or it wasn't filled correctly. Uh, I have noticed no leaks. There's no puddles. My calipers are dry. My, uh, you know, the discs are dry. So I don't see any bubbles in there. Do you? All right, I'm going to lock this thing up, see what happens. So you've seen that I've done that. If I was just to unscrew this cup, I'm going to pour this fluid all over the place. So this little thing with the rubber stopper, uh, my hand's in the way, you'll get the idea. So that's pushed down in there. It actually seats. Now I can hopefully screw this thing off without pouring mineral fluid all over my master cylinder here. Not bad. And I can see some fluid. So I'm going to put the screw in and let's see what happens. With All right, test ride number one. Got the uh, the bleeder screws back in. Front brakes are bled. Uh, trying along at a nice slow speed here. And we're going to try the brake. Alright, needless to say, the brakes are a bit touchy. Uh, so be ready that first try. <laughs> they definitely work now. So I'm gonna go uh, give the <laughs> rear a try. And safety tip, when you're testing your brakes, you might wanna have both hands on the handlebars. All right, so there's the cup back in again. If you've noticed, uh, I still have the fluid from when I did the other side still in there because this little stopper here's allowed me to do that. Try and get the uh, hole to its highest position. We'll pop this out. And let's pump the brake handle and see what happens. Oh, oh no, here comes that air again. My theory, these brakes work great when I got the bike and I've been riding it pretty much like you're supposed to. When I went to fix the disc brakes that were uh, missing the screws, I laid the bike on its side. So, Again, this is just theory. Maybe there was air trapped in there all the way from China. And uh, it just kind of sat there lurking until I laid the bike on its side, allowing the air to go to places that it hadn't been. All right, here we are. And test it. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Much better. Much, much better. So that was my issue. Air in the lines. And quite a bit yeah wow she stops now all right i'm gonna button this all back up maybe uh even try putting the battery in it and go for so a spin. with a, a little bit of a handy work i'm no mechanic uh, i did stay in the holiday and express once but you know with a, a 20 dollars bleeder kit you know I, maybe i could have made something up maybe not that made it easy i got the air out of the system this thing stops like a champ now It'll definitely, uh, it'll definitely endo, and uh, the rear end locks up tight. I think some people heard me mention, and they may have seen one of my previous videos when I had the uh, the Be Cool Explorer, which was an awesome bike. Now you're probably wondering what this thing is lurking over here. I bought an electric bike. Now don't hate me. I loved the Explorer. I loved, loved the Explorer, but for my daughter and my wife, who were both about five two. The Be Cool, even the Explorer, it was just too big. They loved riding it, but you could tell they were scared to death, like getting on it and stopping. So I picked up this electric, sold off the Explorer. The electric is an awesome bike too. 
I can't say that I like one better than the other. Uh, the cool thing with the electric is obviously it folds down. It's smaller. My wife and kid can get on and off it real easy. Uh, <laughs> an impromptu drag race with my daughter. I don't know if it helps that she's probably 100 pounds lighter and that the wheels are 20 inch as opposed to these giant wheels. The electric is quicker off the line, uh, not by much, but you know, she pulls ahead and then it's pretty much limited at 20 where uh, the Be Cool, although it advertises 28, mine tops off at 25, you know, with my weight and wind resistance. But uh, just a quick comparison. Like I said, I love, I love my adventure. So that's not going anywhere. Uh, I just, you know, it's my first electric bike and I wanted to learn how to fix the brakes myself instead of going to some shop and paying God knows what. So, uh, like I said, for 19 bucks, a little bit of, uh, you know, trial and error and I fixed my problem. Hope this helps somebody and uh, if you have any questions, <laughs> you could add them to my post. But like I said, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just, I just tinker around. Thank you.